Hi everyone, today we will be learning about utility maximization. This means how people make choices to get the most satisfaction from what they buy. We will talk about things like the law of diminishing marginal utility, how people decide what to buy, and how demand curves are created. We will also see how price changes affect what people buy. Let's start. So we will cover five main topics in this chapter. The first one is the law of diminishing marginal utility. It explains why we get less satisfaction as we keep consuming more of something. The second one is the theory of consumer behavior. And this is about why people make certain choices when they buy things. And the third one is the utility maximization and the demand curve. And this is about how satisfaction relates to quantity people buy. And the fourth one is income and substitution effect, which is about how changes in price change affects what people buy. And finally, we will briefly talk about applications and extensions. These are some real world examples like new products and why diamonds are more expensive than butter. Let's start with the first topic. The law of diminishing marginal utility tells us that as you consume more of a good or service, each additional unit gives you less satisfaction. For example, let's say you go to a buffet for pizza and you are very hungry. The first pizza you eat gives you a great pleasure. You can say out of 10, you get 10. And the second pizza, you will realize that is, is still great, but it's not going to give as much as pleasure as the first one. Let's say this one gives you eight out of 10, you rate it as eight. And the third pizza, you will realize that is going to give less and less pleasure, less and less pleasure. And it is totally normal that after fourth and fifth pizza, you might feel stomach ache, which is not even giving you a pleasure, but it's hurting you. That is the law of diminishing marginal utility. When the consumption of good or service increases, the additional utility, which is the marginal, the additional utility you gain from each unit is going down. And this explains why actually the demand curves um, are downward sloping. If you remember the demand curve, the quantity is here, the price is here. As you consume more, your willingness to pay goes down. That's why the individual demand curves are downward sloping. Let's go over some important terms. Utility is the satisfaction you get from consuming something. And this is totally personal. What satisfies you may not satisfy someone else. For example, you love chocolate, you consume and you get a lot of satisfaction from chocolate, but someone else doesn't like chocolate. So that person's utility could be zero. And it's not the same as usefulness. Something can give you satisfaction even if it's not useful. And here the ideas are a bit tricky to measure, therefore utility is subjective and difficult to quantify. But we use the term utils to represent units of satisfaction. Like in the previous example I talk about, you rate the first pizza 10 out of 10, you can say 10 utils I receive from the pizza. So what we do is we try to quantify the satisfaction we get from the consumption of the good. So what is util? Util is one unit of satisfaction or pleasure and total utility is the total amount of satisfaction. Let's continue with the pizza example to understand what is total utility. As we say in the previous example, the first pizza gives you 10 utils or you rate 10 out of 10. This is the first pizza and you eat the second pizza, which gives you eight utils, second pizza. Now, if I want to calculate the total utility of consumption of two pizzas, it's going to be 10 plus 8, 80. So the total utility is the sum of all utilities of consuming the goods, the same good and the total amount of units I consume from the same good. That's the total utility. And marginal utility is these numbers, okay? These numbers are, okay, I want to add one more pizza from zero pizza, I'm too hungry, to increase or eat one more pizza. My total utility increases from zero to 10. Okay, therefore my marginal utility, the additional utility I get from consuming the first pizza is 10. 
And now I know that I'm still hungry, I want to eat the second pizza, but from consuming the second pizza, additionally, I gain eight utils. That's the marginal utility. Incremental change or additional utils are called marginal utility. So how do we calculate marginal utility? Marginal utility is this delta sign means change, change in total utility divided by change in quantity. So let's do this example. At zero units, I have zero total utility and I don't have any marginal utility. When I consume the first pizza, total utility is 10 and the marginal utility is change in total utility from 0 to 10 divided by change in quantity, which is 10 over 1, 10. So here, marginal utility is 10. When I consume two pizzas together, total utility is 18. That's we calculated here. What is the marginal utility? Change in total utility is from 10 to 18 divided by change in quantity, which is 8 over 1, 8. Marginal utility is 8. So it is an increase in total utility. So these are the calculations maybe you need to know for this chapter. Here is another example. You will see how we graph total and marginal utility. And here we have the tacos example per meal. So the same idea is you consume zero taco, you have zero total utilities and marginal utility doesn't exist. But when you increase the taco consumption one, your total utility becomes 10 and the change in total utility is 10, therefore marginal utility is 10. If you consume two tacos together, two of them, your total utility is 18 and the marginal utility is the change in total utility when you add the second taco or eat the second taco, which is 18 minus 10. In that case, it's eight. That's the marginal utility. Three tacos together is 24, but because of the third taco, I got an additional utility of six. Four tacos, great, total 28, but additional taco gives me a marginal utility of four, 28 minus 24. Five tacos together, 30, and additionally, the fifth taco gives me a pleasure of two, and six tacos the, the, all together gives me again 30 utils, and there's no change in marginal utility because of eating the sixth one, and the seventh one is actually hurt me, therefore, it's giving me a stomach ache, your total utility decreases from 30 to 28. So given this, you see that total utility function is increasing and reaching a point top and then start decreasing after that and marginal utilities because of diminishing marginal utilities is decreasing all the way down as you see the additional utilities received after the first unit is decreasing now let's talk about theory of consumer behavior consumers try to get the most satisfaction from their money by making rational choices so these choices depend on their preferences for different goods the budget constraint or how much money they have, and the prices of the goods they want. These factors help consumers decide what to buy. So we need to talk about utility maximizing rule when we have a budget constraint, and this is the consumer equilibrium. So the utility maximizing rule says that consumers reach equilibrium when they spend their money in a way that gives them the same marginal utility per dollar for each dollar. So this is the same idea as the best bank for buck. This means that the extra satisfaction per dollar spent is balanced across all the goods they buy. So here is the rule, but I think it's going to be more clear if we can understand it on an example. So for utility maximization, the consumption bundle of two goods, A and B. So when I say consumption bundle, it represents the number of A's I buy and number of B's I buy can be determined by this rule, which is marginal utility of product A divided by price of A should be equal to marginal utility of product B divided by price of B. Here is the example. As you see, we have two products, apple and oranges, and the apple price is one and orange price is two. And now we need to calculate, given the marginal utilities, marginal utility divided by price. Okay, this one. So you take the marginal utility for the first apple and divide by 1, that's why it's 10. St take the second marginal utility of the second apple and divide by 1, it's 8, and goes like that. 
For oranges, the first orange gives a marginal utility of 24, the price is 2, 24 divided by 2 is 12, and in the second orange, the marginal utility by buying or eating the second orange is 20, 20 divided by 2 is 10, and that's how we calculate all the numbers on this column. So now the question is how we can find how many apples and oranges to consume to maximize utility. We say that it has to be this row. Marginal utility A divided by PA should be equal to marginal utility B divided by PB. And we know that if you scroll down, you will see that there's an 8 here and there's an 8 here. So if you buy two apples and four oranges, you are actually maximizing the utility. There are other numbers that they are equal to. For instance, there's 6 here, 6 here. But we need to consider our income as well. We have $10 of income and we can afford two apples and four oranges. How? Two times one dollar plus four times two dollars and each of an orange, which is 10. But if we consider this bundle to be the equilibrium where I buy four apples and five oranges, I do not have income to consume that bundle. That's why 8.8 gives us the optimal bundle. So let's understand how this system works in step-by-step -step analysis. As you see here, the first apple gives me MU divided by P, 10, and the first orange gives me 12, which is 24 divided by 2. This is 10 divided by 1, if you remember from the previous slide. And this one gives higher utility per dollar I spent. There's, therefore, I'm going to choose first orange for $2. And now I spend $2 on the first orange, 10 minus 2, I have $8 of income. Now I need to make a decision whether to buy the first apple or second orange. And 10 divided by 1 is 10, and 20 divided by 2, because the second orange marginal utility is 20, 10. So they are giving the same satisfaction, therefore I will spend $1 on first apple and $2 on second orange, 8 minus 3, now I have $5 left for my budget. I'm subtracting 3 because it's $1 for apple and $2 for orange. Now I will continue because I have still $5 left and I need to find how to spend that money. Second apple gives me an 8 marginal utility per dollar spent, which is 8 divided by 1 from the previous table. And third orange is going to give me 18 divided by 2, 9. So I'm going to choose 9 because 9 is greater than 8. And I will buy the third orange for $2, which is I'll subtract from 5 because I spent $2. I have left with $3. And now still I have $3 and I need to make the final decision. I can compare the second apple because I haven't bought the second apple. And I haven't bought the fourth orange. Second apple, 8 divided by 1 gives me 8. And the fourth orange, 16 divided by 2, 8. I will buy both of them and I have income for that. And I spend all my income, therefore we are done. So as you see, we find the optimal bundle is two apples and four oranges, A and B. But it's easier to find it in a, on a table like this because we can see when marginal utility for apple divided by price of apple equals marginal utility of orange divided by price of orange and I can definitely find out the quantities by looking at this table. And now that we understand utility maximization, we can see why the demand curve slopes downward. As prices change, people adjust how much they buy. When the price of a good drops, people buy more of it to maximize satisfaction. So remember, the determinant for choosing bundles is marginal utility divided by price. If this goes down, the marginal utility of each unit increases. Therefore, look at this, as the price goes down, you buy more quantities. That's how the demand curves drive. Here in this screen, you will see that for $2, price of orange, we buy four. But if the price of orange changes to one, you buy six of it. That's the demand curve and demand schedule. Two important effects happen when the price of a good changes. The first one is the income effect. When prices drop, people have more money to spend so they can buy more. And the second one is the substitution effect. When a good becomes cheaper, 
people buy more of it instead of buying something else that's now more expensive. Together, these effects explain why people change their buying habits when prices change. Now let's see some applications and extensions. The iPad was a new product when it was first int introduced to the market and it had a high margin utility to price ratio, which made it very popular. The diamond water paradox asks why water, which is essential for life, is cheaper than diamonds, which are not. This is explained by marginal utility of each of them. Water we consume a lot, so additional amount of water doesn't give us too much marginal utility. For diamond, we have few, therefore an additional amount of diamond has a lot of marginal utility, therefore the price of diamond is higher than water. And for cash and non-cash gifts, they may not give the same utility as cash because it, it is possible that non-cash gifts do not always match the recipient's preferences, although cash and non-cash gifts have the same equal value. And finally, taxes can change how people behave. For example, excise taxes on cigarettes make each pack give less marginal utility per dollar, so people may buy less. But sometimes taxes have unexpected effects, like the British window tax, which led people to change how they built their homes to avoid tax. And let's wrap up chapter 7. We have covered how consumers make choices to maximize their satisfaction and how price changes affect those choices. Thanks for watching and I hope you now have a better understanding of how utility maximization works.